what if I told you you could reach a whole bunch of new people with your blog? People who hadn't heard of you before. What if I told you there was a way to expand the range of relevant topics you cover on your blog? Well, there is. It's not necessarily an easy solution, but the benefits may well outweigh the effort put in. Welcome to Spiderworking's blog centric podcast. A podcast about blogging. Hello and welcome to episode 55 of the Blog Centric Podcast. I'm Amanda Webb and you'll find the show notes for today at spiderworking.com forward slash 55. A few weeks ago in episode 51, I talked about guest posting and how you might go about submitting your own guest posts to other sites. Today, I want to flip that and look at why it might be a good idea to allow guest posts from other contributors on your site. If you're a small business or organisation, the chances are that you're producing all the content for your blog. That's great. It gives you a a unique voice that people recognise and you have complete control. However, Whenever I work with digital marketing groups and we start to discuss blogging, the students tend to come up with exactly the same idea. Let's get guest posts from other contributors. And it seems like a no-brainer when you think about it. If somebody else can write the post for you, that's less work, less hassle, and you're going to get a broader range of content. And yes, that can be true. But before you take this approach, be aware, setting up a guest blogging program on your site can be just as time consuming as if you were writing the content yourself. You're listening to Blog Centric from Spiderworking. The first question you need to ask yourself is, does the value that you'll get from people writing for your site outweigh the time and the effort and the hassle? that it takes to manage those guest submissions. If you think the answer is yes, keep listening. Actually, if you think the answer is no, keep listening. I might persuade you. The next step is to define your goals. Yep, it's me talking about goals again. What will allowing guest posts on your blog do for you and your business? So for example, do you want to reach a new audience If so, who? Who do you want to reach? How are you going to measure the success of your guest blogging program to make sure you're reaching those people? Do you want to just increase traffic to your site? And if so, what type of traffic is relevant? How will you measure the success of that? Do you want to build brand awareness? If so, again, What type of people do you want to reach? Do you want to share information that's outside your knowledge base, but will benefit your readers, draw new people in, new readers, new customers? The answers to those questions will help you choose guest bloggers and topics. Now you know what you want to achieve. You're going to need to start looking for people to contribute to your site. Ideally, You're going to be looking for people who already have a good social presence and that reach an audience that you want to target with your blog, but you might not be reaching already. Before you approach anyone, don't make the mistake I made the first time I tried doing this. You need to contact people that are already in the habit of writing. I used to just like ask people who had the right knowledge but they didn't write on a regular basis. So what I got was deadlines being missed, lack of quality in the posts. They weren't really good quality posts. They didn't showcase the person in the light that I knew they had. So stick with people who you know can write already. So you're looking for people who have blogs or that write regular posts for other publications, or maybe they... They write extensively on the LinkedIn publishing platform. They're good people to approach. 
and start with your own network. Have a look at the other bloggers that you know. Does their content and style fit your blog? Whose content do you share on a regular basis? So if you're sharing their content and you think it's good enough to share their content with your audience, then they're probably going to write a post that is going to be interesting to your audience as well. Who are you connected to on LinkedIn that uses that LinkedIn publishing platform? Do they publish valuable posts and would those posts appeal to your reader? If so, put them on the list. Next, search Google for people in blogging niches that you know attract your target market. And again, preferably people that aren't writing the same sort of content as you, something, people that have something new to offer. Now, these are going to be harder to approach because you don't necessarily know them already. So rank them. And when you rank them, I'm going to ask you to look at the Moz toolbar again. I mentioned that back in episode 51 when we were looking at um, blogs that you would want to approach to guest blog for. Only this time we're looking for the opposite. When we're looking to post on another site, we want a site that has a higher domain authority than us because that means if we get to link back to our own sites, that's a more relevant link. When you're looking for contributors... It's kind of handy. It's beneficial to them if they have a lower domain authority, because that means you've got something concrete to offer them, an inbound link from a site with a higher domain authority. Now, you don't have to live by this rule because, of course, if someone famous wants to write for your site, if someone with a great domain authority wants to write for your site, that's brilliant. I'm just suggesting this because it adds value. When you approach them, you're offering them something good in exchange. Create a, a wish list of all the bloggers that you want to contribute. I recommend using something like Google Sheets or, or Excel to keep track of them. So have their name, their blog or website address, uh, details of all their social channels, their email address and any dates that you've made contact with them. And I'll talk about this spreadsheet again later on. For the people you know, you can approach them straight away. For the people you don't know, you are going to need to do some relationship building. So you can use things like Twitter, Twitter lists, LinkedIn, blog commenting, other social networks to start building a relationship before you go ahead and ask them. You've selected your writers now and it's time to approach them. You might choose to connect contact your LinkedIn connections on LinkedIn. But for the rest, I always think the best approach is email. In some cases, of course, you might think that sending a direct message on Twitter or via their Facebook page is a better solution. But always be ready to follow up with email. It really is the professional way to connect with people. Remember when someone writes for your site, they're spending a lot of time creating a post for you. If it's valuable to get their content, you want to make it look like an attractive proposition to you. Now, I talked about the value of getting an inbound link from your site, but what else do you have? Does it offer them exposure to an audience they don't already reach? Will it help establish them as an expert? Have a look back at the reasons that you might choose to blog on another site that we discussed in episode 51 and flip it. So you can see the value that others might get blogging for you. You will need to think about your offer like a business transaction in exchange for a blog post that they write for you. This is what you get in return. And don't forget to appeal to their ego. You should know enough about your prospects at this stage that you can compliment them on any post they've written and created Tell them how you and your audience have found it useful in the past. And be honest here. People can see through all that automated content. You know, you need to spend a bit of time on this. Make a note of the date that you send a request and set yourself a reminder to follow it up. All this data you should put in your spreadsheet so that you're not bombarding someone, but you are following up any warm leads. You're listening to Blog Centric from Spiderworking. When someone agrees to post, it's a good idea to send them a short document or a link to a page on your website that outlines the basics. 
I call this a guest blogger pack, but that's possibly just a fancy word for a page on your website. This should include what types of posts you are looking for. You could always include examples of the types of posts that you want, what they contain, what makes them relevant, and also let people know what sort of posts aren't relevant to your blog. You should include how to submit your post. Will you give them a login for your site or do you need them to send it in as a Word document? Include what you require. How many words do you need the post to be? Put in a minimum and a maximum if you have one. Do you need the writer to submit their own images? If so, what format? What's the requirement? Most guest blog bloggers will, will expect you to put a bio to them on your site as well. So do you need people to submit that bio? If so, what should they put in it? Do you need a photograph? How many words? Can there be a link back to their own site as part of it? And then inbound links, which we've talked about a lot already. Are people allowed to link to their own site from in the content they produce themselves? And if so, what sort of link is acceptable? What's not acceptable? And make sure they know that you have discretion to remove it. If you're looking for a good example, I really like HubSpot's blogging guidelines. I'm going to leave a, a link to that in the show notes, spiderworking.com forward slash 55. It's well worth looking at. I think it's a great template. All going well, you should now have a spreadsheet list of bloggers that are really ready and willing to contribute to your site. Now you need to create a schedule. How many guest posts per month do you want to allow on your site? You might decide that your content should still be at the heart of the blog. It should be your voice shining through. So depending how frequently you blog yourself will depend on how many guest posts you're going to allow. Do you want to allow one a month, one a week, more frequent than that? Set up some publication dates that you want to fill in a calendar. So I use my Google calendar for this. And once you've identified a, a blogger, offer them a submission date. And when you offer them the date, be a little bit dishonest here. Give them a date, maybe two or three days or depending on the blogger, maybe a week before you actually want to go to publish, because this gives you plenty of time for them to miss their deadline, you to edit, you to add images, you to write a headline. So make sure you're giving yourself enough time to do all that once they've submitted. Again, if you use um, Google Calendar for their submission date, you could set this up as an event get them to RSVP that they're coming to the event and then you can send them automated reminders to that email address. Google will just do that for you. Of course, the personal approach is better so you could just use those reminders to remind you to remind them and send them a personal note asking how are they getting on with that? Um, do they need any help? Are they going to make the deadline, etc.? And those follow-ups are really important because I know that I have tasks on my to-do list that sometimes gets slid down my to-do list if I don't get a reminder or a little nag from someone. But don't tell anyone. So that's it. Now you're set up and ready to go with your guest blogging. But if that sounds like just too much hard work, there's an alternative. You're listening to Blog Centric from Spiderworking. I may well have put you off the whole idea of accepting guest posts. But there is an alternative. Instead of inviting guest bloggers, interview people. Although you're still going to have to go through the process of finding interviewees in a very similar way to I've outlined above, you're likely to get a better response rate because the idea of being interviewed doesn't sound as scary, as time consuming, as much hassle as writing a post for someone. So you might find that people are ready and willing to do it, even though they still need to write in most cases their answers in text to your questions. It just seems a little less intimidating. You might even be able to attract some of the bigger bloggers from your industry, bigger influencers as an interview less work for them, 
get some good exposure. The standard way of conducting blog interviews is to send out a list of questions by email and ask the interviewee to reply with their answers. And this is a quick and easy method. The problem is that the answers can often feel a bit stilted. It also robs you of the opportunity to delve further into their answers. If they bring up something, you, you can't plug them for a bit more info. So an alternative is to record an interview, either in person or via Skype, or there's this tool called Zoom that can do it as well. This will add a more conversational, a more real tone to what they're saying, and you'll get better and fuller responses, and you can delve in further. You can ask them follow-up questions. The problem with this method is that you need to transcribe those interviews and that's going to be time consuming depending how fast you can type or you could of course start a podcast I will be talking about that in a future episode there's a cool site called Rev I'm going to leave a link to that in the show notes that transcribes your audio content at actually not a bad price and I have to give a shout out to Ian Cleary who told me about this I'm definitely going to be trying it for my video captions but actually I might have a look at it for my show notes in future too you're listening to blog centric from spider working today I've either inspired you or scared you off the whole idea of putting together a guest blogging program I am currently deciding if I'm going to add it to my 2017 strategy. I have to say, I'm tempted. Remember, getting people to write content for your site can be a good way to broaden your audience. The people who contribute are going to be lending their expertise and and their authority. But it is hard work. If you embark on a guest blogging program, make sure you're regimented in your approach and you allow enough time for finding, chasing and editing guest bloggers. And this week's blogging challenge, if you're willing to accept it, is number one, decide, do you want to ask for guest contributors to your site? Is it worth your while? Number two, Start building a list of possible contributors to your site. Number three, write a guest post starter pack. Number four, create a schedule for your guest posts. Hopefully I've inspired some of you to give it a go. Do let me know if you do. You can leave a link in the show notes, which are at spiderworking.com forward slash 55. But before you go and do that, You know what I'm going to say, don't you? I'd just love it. Christmas is around the corner. You know what I'd like for Christmas? I would really like a review of this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. If you go to my show notes, there's a video there that shows you exactly how to leave me a review. And it really helps because I know that I'm more likely to subscribe to a podcast if I can see that other people like it too. I also know that the more reviews I get, the higher I get pushed up iTunes listing, the more listeners I get, the more people that I know listen, the more I want to keep podcasting. So you'd be doing me a massive favor. It would give you the feel good factor and If you believe in karma, you never know what good things might happen in return. That's all from me for this week. Until next week, happy blogging. Blog Centric from Spiderworking is sponsored by We Teach Social, social media e-learning courses for small business. Find out more at weteachsocial.com.